Hello. And then, of course, you can't change the clothes till you die, but here still you can change. And then even your clothes or in your car, it's just slowly, slowly attack. Try to minimize the attachment, you see. And uh, I think I thought of telling this story, which is very interesting for me. Very interesting how uh, how she is she removed attachment. You see, uh, of course she was very rich in Tibet. You see, very very rich. Her ornament, okay, head head ornament in Tibet is really heavy, a uh, lot of thing, and there are some ceremony which takes like ages. And she was very powerful. She said, "Please, please uh, end the ceremony as soon as possible. I have neck problem because." Uh, this <laughs> ornament, like coral, turquoise, and then pearls, and the rupees, and the jets, and the stars, so many, oh, so heavy. Oh. And she used to say, please uh, end the ceremony as soon as possible. I'm, uh, my neck is hurting. She was like this, you see. And she came to India. And she sold offer. And then she become home mother. Her husband, they become like home parents in, in the school where I studied, Musul Homes Foundation. They become home parents. And she was really like a man, you see. Husband is like a female, she's like a man. And uh, we saw many funny things, okay. Oh, she's very strong. And then at a time, she has another boyfriend and he has another girlfriend. And those, they know that they have this, okay. This. And she said, oh, I think, uh, of course, almost like I'm saying the name. Now you have a nice uh, girlfriend. I also have a very nice, uh, she has two boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have two boyfriend who are brother, okay. So I think today we separate, happily. Today we are separate, okay. You take whatever you need, whatever you need. Of course, all the male things are belong to you. And actually, if it belongs to female things that belongs to me, but still, if you have some interest, you can take something. In the morning, start it, afternoon, up just a little later afternoon, they separate happily. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> they have been a couple for many years, okay? And then she stayed with two, these two boyfriend, okay? <laughs> boyfriend. She stayed there. And she stayed in Delhi, and they did very well with a, with some business like this. She was very clever. Then went to Canada, Canada, and then she said, "Okay, now I really don't want to remain as a, your your partner, so I will search another partner, and then I, I really like to be none." And she found a partner for these two men. Fix it, <laughs> fix it, okay, and then she she become uh, none. She became nun in Dharamsal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she, she, she was she was really like everything is like a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> then she she built a small house, she stayed in Nanari. I really love her, you see. She's so and so good, you see. And, uh, and then one day there was no electricity. No electric electricity uh, went off. And she went to the toilet. And then she hit her forehead on the wall, okay, on, on the on the wheel or bed. She hit, and it was very painful. And then she was thinking, mm -hmm. blind is very difficult. She she was thinking about the blind people. She had a pain, but she was thinking about the blind people. So difficult. This is so difficult. Okay, so difficult. Just. Just I become like a blind for only about one or two hours, you see. And I bang my forehead, almost like I had a lot of pain. The blind people, how can they pick up their food? And this is so bad. I think I better to donate one of my eye. Wanted to donate my one of my eye so that a blind person can have one eye at least. I can see the road and like this, okay? She decided on that very evening, say. I want to dip one of my eye. If the person is very poor, I will also help for the operation and everything expenses. And uh, so she announced, okay, in a Tibetan magazine, which is called Shecha, she announced. And uh, really it was like a sincere, okay, 
She said, okay, anyone who wants to run eye, right or left, it doesn't matter. Her both eyes are quite the same, you see. So, no, so you just think, anyone who wants, okay, please come. And I will pay the, your traveling expenses. And then, of course, we have to test, okay, matching all like tissues and blood group, da 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 da, so many things. I can pay all the expenses. So just come. And uh, she was praying that I really want to, I really want to donate on my eye. I, so, so please help Buddhas and Buddhasattvas, everyone, that I will be successful in this donating this eye. Hundred percent sure. And one man, man came from South India, and then he came to her and said, "I wanted to help." And then he said, "Oh, so happy! He was so happy, so happy." And uh, but then tissue didn't match, and still she announced. Of course, uh, I don't think she got the one who can, whom she can uh, donate. Uh, and I met her. I went to meet her because this is a very interesting thing. Also, a very meaningful thing, and I took some research, research uh, students from the United States. I took, and they interviewed her, and she stayed in such a nice, humble way. And his students also went there two times. Very small, very small. At that time, I saw her uh, retreat room, very small, and his students also went there two times. They said, so, like. Uh, Denunciation. Okay, there are certain people who are like uh, who have already when they were young, they have so much sort of like power to renounce. And then some people are quite stingy, quite difficult to detach. So we have to take <coughs> step in such a way. And of course, you, I think if you are really determined, you really have to have a good teacher good teacher and reliable teaching and then practice and practice practice and then one day even today it looks very very difficult by practicing and then some of the Kadamba teachers they say Dujya Sunami never imbassed Namji Dandar Dup Dup Mitum Yama Namji Lala Vaj Dup Tugay that is like Dujya Sunami never imbassed our mind is impermanent today say oh, I can't I can't detest this okay but if you go on practicing, go on practicing, one day, ah, oh, this is very easy to detach because of the practice. And Shandi also said, If you familiarize, there's nothing which cannot be changed into easy. Shandi Deva said, if you go on practicing, anything which you think is very, very difficult, if you practice, it will be very easy. With the kind of human. There's no phenomena which cannot be become easier. So mm, I think these are the things. And of course, uh, if we, if we, it has to be very technical. It has to be very technical. Uh, I have one friend who is now almost leaving his uh, mm, his uh, mm, everything. Okay, and. Uh, Actually, he planned to leave uh, August. And I said, stay a little bit longer. I told him, stay a little longer. And then coming in August to Dharamsala. And uh, so, of course, uh, uh, it is not me, but he is also, he has his own determination, you see. Oh, why should I waste my time? So many nice things I can do. Why should I be so from morning till evening, thinking, thinking, all this, all this. What a useless, you see. What a useless. And I have another friend who is also, uh, who can jump a lot. So it, it is, it matters after the practice, after the practice, yeah. I think I did a little bit more explanation, more than what you asked, yeah. But today, this time, renunciation is very important. Of course, we are talking about Pujjita, and of course, a little later we will talk about the emptiness, but uh, I'm focusing on the renunciation. Yeah. <coughs> then, yeah, so 
tormented by the three miseries and thinking of your mother in this condition and generate the supreme mind of bodhicitta, the mother, okay, to feel every sentient being as a mother also is an, also need a lot of practice. Of course, we are doing practice of generating bodhicitta through the practice of seven cause and effect, isn't it? The first one is uh, we have to try to see that every sentient being has been my mother. If they have been my mother, then they have done uh, many, 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 many good things, like thousands of millions of times. Now this time I have opportunity to repay back. Then what is the best to repay back? To make them happy and then make them less suffering. That is the best uh, repay back I can do, you see. So in this way we uh, try to practice seven cause and effect. Uh, so, um, did you read eight? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then, then we go to the ninth. Now we we'll run a little bit. <coughs> Marathon. <laughs> although you <coughs> although you train in renunciation and the mind of bodhicitta, without wisdom that realizes the ultimate reality, you cannot cut the root of sacred existence. Root of sacred existence is ignorance, okay? root of sacred existence. Therefore, strive, work very hard to understand, uh, understand dependent arise. So, yeah. <clears throat> אם החוכמה מבינה את אופן הקיום הסופי אינה ברשותך, לא תוכל לקטוע את שורש הקיום. לפיכך חשקה מאמץ באמצעים להבין נכוחה את ההתהוות התלויה. What is your experience? Tibetan language is difficult, isn't it? It's very rich. Huh? Extremely rich. Rich? Yeah, when it comes to Buddhism, yeah, it is very rich. But when it comes to like science and this, then it's not that rich. And also especially like politics, economics, not very rich, Tibetan. But when it comes to like Buddhism, they, 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 they really, the Tibetan language exercise a lot to hold all the message of the Buddhism. So, so therefore, it is rich. Rich, yes, yes. Uh, oh, now I don't want to tell the story, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really with Buddhism, yes, it is really rich. Now today, I think there's no second language which can hold Buddhism, which is held by the Tibetan language. No language. Even Sanskrit? No. Because Sanskrit, now so many texts are missing. All burnt, all burnt, you see. All the text, luckily, translated into Tibetan. Now they are, they are translating into Sanskrit with a great big difficulty. Because no text which are translated, many are not existing in India. All burnt, okay, all burnt, yeah, not existing. Now try to bring it back, but still very, very far. 200, more than 200 volumes of commentaries of Buddha's teaching, and 100, and I think sometimes like it depends on the about 100 volumes of Buddha's teaching. And 300 volumes, more than 300 volumes, okay, it's not simple, it's really like this thing. Has to be translated into, Sanskrit is very difficult. Very difficult. Now I think it's have to rely on Tibetan language. Yeah. And when I was uh, giving uh, uh, what talk in the ceremony when I got this uh, uh, TV, and the topic was uh, the <clears throat> topic was moving Buddhism, the phenomena. 
something like phenomena of moving Buddhism from one place to another place. And why? That was the topic. So I became teacher. So I was I talked a lot how Buddhism came to Tibet. How much effort the Tibetan they put, the translators, the Indian teachers, Tibetan Tibetan kings, okay. how much effort? How much we spent, okay? We had a lot of lot of gold, okay. How much human life we spent coming to India and studying and going back. Roads are very, very bad. Very, very bad. Dangerous, you see. No car, no flight. And inviting all these great teachers. And they are staying somewhere, okay, in a very isolated place to search them, to invite them. Great effort, you see. And then how they translate it. Really profound, okay. 100% sort of rely, we can rely, how they translate it. The terms are totally standardized with the witness of the king and expert translators and everything. Term, terms are standardized, okay. It is not like someone translates another book, they translate another book in their own way, their own way, their own Not in this way. No. It's all language. Tibetan language was modified to be equal, equivalent to Sanskrit, and the terms to use what are in Sanskrit are all standardized, defined, and then translated, and then checked by, at least by, by a great Indian teacher. No text is there which is not checked by Indian teacher when it comes to translation. Everything translated by great translator who went to India to study Sanskrit and Buddhism, came back and they translate, but then they bring another teacher who will check. Uh, they, therefore, we don't have any controversy, controversies, you see. It's totally standardized. Translate in, uh, uh, the text in Lada or in Ampo, we don't have any problem to read and to understand. So now today we have, uh, I don't know, maybe in the long run, how it will, how it will land so many translations. Everyone is putting very good effort with a sincere heart. And uh, uh, so, see. Now we go to the... <clears throat> so I, I think I explained a little bit. The root of the cyclic existence, okay? Root of the scientific existence is, as I told you, this is ignorance, okay? And uh, to remove ignorance, okay, to remove ignorance, if we do meditation on bodhicitta, will it go away? No. If we, I uh, meditate on compassion and loving kindness, it will help, it will help to reduce, but it will not go away by itself. Why? Because to remove ignorance, we need a mind which is antidote to ignorance. Antidote means totally against this. If the ignorance says that all the phenomena are existing independently, the ignorance perceives in this way, we need a mind, we need a mind which says that it is not existing independently. Not existing independently. So if I practice, okay, if I practice having a deep understanding that everything depends on each other and there's no phenomena which is existing without depending upon other. So therefore, this phenomena has no independent existence. Why? Because it is not existing by itself. Why it is not existing by itself? Because it is existing depending upon other and then it exists. So the mind which is perceiving that it has independent existence, it is existing by itself. And this is the ignorance. And the mind which says that this is not existing in a way ignorant perceives, it has no independent existence, it is not existing by itself, it is dependent upon other and then it exists. Then these two might fight in one person, you see, one person. If I started understanding the ultimate reality of this cup, or if this is not existing independently, it is empty of independent existence, then my concept of having 
It is existing independently. It has to go away, you see. It cannot stay in one mind. If someone is like a mad, okay, they might say, existing independently and not existing independently, that is no rival statement, you see. Someone who's really thinking carefully, if this is not existing independently, if you understood this, okay, if this is the truth, then the concept or view of phenomena existing independently we have to go. This mind has to go. Because they are added on, you see. Like if the warm air coming into this room, if we use if we use like a cold air, okay, cold air, then all the warm air has to go away. It has to be disappeared, okay? It has to be changed. Like this, okay, this is an antidote, antidote. Darkness is light, okay? If the light comes, darkness has to go. So always like ignorance is like a darkness and wisdom is like a light, you see? We put this as an example. So this is an antidote. It doesn't stay without fighting each other. So therefore, the root cause of uh, single existence is ignorance. If you don't want to be in ignorance, if you don't want to be in samsara or single existence, the only way is to remove this source, okay, root. Then it will not grow. And for that, we need to develop wisdom. The, what is this wisdom? There are three different types of wisdom. The ultimate is wisdom, which is having unmistakable understandable emptiness. And this is the antidote to ignorance. And if the ignorance is removed, then there's no way the attachment and angry, ego, jealousy will not come. There's no source. So in this way, uh, Buddha tried to find the solution for his subject to be free from samsara, uh, to be from, uh, free from disease, old age, and death. This was his answer, okay? Now. <clears throat> Nine is done, isn't it? Uh, Relay with this, okay, we are also talking in the in the last session, you know, this ignorance, you know, we have to talk, because this emptiness is, yeah. Mm, so that now, ninth, tenth. If I read tenth, is it okay? Yeah. Uh, still we have, yeah. One who sees the infallible cause and effect of all phenomena in samsara and nirvana and destroy all focuses of apprehensis, apprehension has entered the path which pleases the Buddha. <coughs> if we enter into a path of thought or mind which is Partly unmistaken, and which will bring many good, good results. And then Buddha will become very happy. Because now my children are doing really good, okay? Whether he's in class one or class two, it doesn't matter. Whether he's in university or college, it doesn't matter. At least his mind is changed into wisdom. Then Buddha become very happy. Oh, now he got the key to be free from cyclic existence. Yeah? So, and, and in short, this is, you, know, you will read. מי שרואה שגורם ותוצאה לעולם אינם מוטעים עבור כל התופעות במעגל הקיום ובנירוונה ושהורס את כל מושאי הצפייה של התודעה האוחזת בקיום אמיתי עלה על הדרך המענה את הבודה. How many time we have? Or oh, still 10 minutes or 15? 15. Oh, yeah. Now I ask one question, okay? Now that these are, uh, I will try to explain, uh, but we have to go a little uh, uh, quick. 
But I will ask one question. That is, uh, do you know, do you know, do you know, including myself, okay, do we know, I think better, do we know that we have ignorance? Do we know, do we know exactly that we have ignorance? If you say yes, how do you know? How do you know that you have ignorance? How do you know that you have ignorance? And how do you know that what you have may be not the same ignorance as me? Okay, now this is a uh, no, this is not a very good question. So we, we stay in small circle. How do we know that we have ignorance? We know that we, we get angry, isn't it? And uh, we know that we have attachment. And uh, there are many, many of you maybe not know uh, jealousy, but uh, and many of you know that what is jealousy. And ego, I don't know whether you know uh, ego or not, okay? And then the very difficult thing is that do you know that, okay, do we all know that we, we have ignorance? If you know, will you say a few words? I have ignorance. I really know that I have ignorance. And can you say a few words that proves that you have really ignorance? <laughs> we all want we all want to be happy. Uh -huh. And we do the things that we think that will make makes us happy. But yet we don't get the ultimate happiness. So, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. that, is not, is, that is not ignorance. That is a, someone did this. <laughs> How can you prove that this is because of ignorance? I, your, due to your statement, I don't get any idea that you have ignorance. You, see. you look very wise. <laughs> <laughs> If we know that we have ignorance, doesn't it mean that we have wisdom? So if, if it's like this, then we don't know that we have ignorance. If we know for sure that we have ignorance, yeah. it means that we know wisdom. Yeah. No, we can all know that we have math. Huh? I said it's not, I said we can also know that we don't know math, algebra, mm -hmm. and that doesn't make us good. If you don't know algebra, okay, and you have ignorance on algebra, okay? After studying, what you didn't know, one day you will know it. That means you remove the ignorance on algebra, okay? That I totally agree. But then, how can you prove that you have ignorance? What is here explaining, okay? Which is the root cause for cyclic existence? What? What is this? Algebra is okay. I was explaining, in, I think it was in Haifa, isn't it? I was, I was asked to give talk on ignorance. And I was uh, putting example as computer. Uh, of course, still I'm not good in computer, but a little bit, I know more, a little bit more than at that time. So I said, my ignorance on computer is very big. As soon as someone put computer in front of me, I become so nervous. What to press, what not to press, and then, then I started making more mistakes, you see. All these mistakes are because of ignorance. Means not knowing the computer properly. If I know the computer properly, then I have less ignorance on computer. And then I will make less mistake. If I have no idea about com a computer, I will make bundles of mistake. If I know a little bit more, but not in a depth, I might make certain sort of mistake, but not the silly, 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 silly mistake. Because the ignorance becomes Ignorance on computer becomes thinner and thinner. Yeah, that is the main purpose of education, you see. Yeah. But how can you prove that you have the root cause of cyclic existence? Yeah. Yes. It maybe come from laziness or fear. 
uh, laziness, uh, uh, the, the, it, it